Yo, what's going on, everyone? It's your boy Jack. Oh, it's the go. You either know or you don't. First and foremost, thank you guys so much for tuning in again. You guys are awesome. Appreciate the support as always. Number two, if you haven't watched the latest Black Clover episode, go watch it. I've never been so hyped for an anime in my life. Like, and like I, I grew up when Naruto was dropping on a weekly basis. I've never been this satisfied with an anime. That turned out wildly, wildly better than I imagined. So you guys need to go watch that if you haven't. But let's get into this. Um, so we talked about Raijin Luck last week. Uh, we got this new form for Luck. And I made a tweet saying, like, okay, I, I have, like, this wild reach that I drafted. And uh, it's still drafted. And I'm glad I took a little more time, you know, before I posted, because I did find some really cool things. Um, and the reach is going to be included in this, uh, because as you know, I have this long running theory about, well, we'll get to it. So let's just look at Luck's new Raijin form. I'm just going to call it Raijin form. So where Lufalu used to have a halo, he now has orbs instead. He's also got horns, which Lufalu also had. Uh, but we also get these markings on his chest, his arms, and his legs, along with a tail and wings. These are things that Lufalu did not have. Um, I, sorry if I included horns in that. I can't remember if I just did. But Lufalu did have horns. We know that. Um, but these are these are things, and the, the most striking thing to me is more so the tail and the markings and the orbs. Because with everyone getting all of these wild transformations, we got Yuno's transformation, we got Nox and multiple transformations. The thing is, a tail isn't normal for a transformation to have. Um, and we're the only time we do see a tail is if a devil is involved. So it's interesting that Luck does develop this and he starts taking on these traits that the ancient demons also seem to have. But there's... Aside from the ancient demons, we've already we've already made that parallel in the last video. Another similarity I want to make is between Luck and Asta's form. Okay, so I mean, there's a lot of similarities, and yes, it's not like the completely the same. But let's look at what they have. Okay, so both have wings. Lux are very very small. If you did not know, that right there is a wing, and you can see it in one of the uh, the last pages on the on the chapter when he's looking at uh the the castle that's burning and freezing with fuegolian in the picture as well uh he's got small wings they both have horns okay uh the tails of course the markings are both on their legs on their arms and they have it on the chest now asta's is different but Asta does have similar markings on his shoulder pads on his arm and a similar marking on his headband, uh, which is also a marking that the ancient demons do have as well. Uh, what else? Make sure I'm not missing anything. They they both have the uh, the marks on their face going up towards their eyes. Uh, this is something that Lufalu also did have as well. Um, and I think... Oh, and of course the orbs. We, we can't forget about the orbs, right? So I think this is really interesting that their forms seem to just kind of parallel each other. Um, while Asta's is definitely different, uh, we have to understand that this is a relationship between two beings, while Luck is just one being. So it's not, of course, they're going to be different in some ways, but I do think there's a connection here. Now, we talked about uh, Raijin in the last video, and just a brief recap, is that the Raijin is the Thunder God, um, who is also known as an Oni, which is just a demon. Uh, there's not a whole lot of lore except of how they were created, um, and as far as like siblings and friends go. Other than that, there's nothing super deep about it, which is kind of what I like about this. But this is a case of Tabata, I think, mixing lore together, and this is really interesting that he does this, because where we have Raijin in lore... He's got who I've read is could be a brother or also a friend. Um, I've read both. I'm not sure which one is more popular, to be honest with you. But I have read both, just so you guys know. Um, Raijin has a brother or a friend named Fujin. 
Now I'm going to read Fujin to you guys. Um, I'm going to read that part last. But this is a depiction of Fujin. And it says, the iconography of Fujin seems to have its origin in cultural exchanges along the Silk Road, starting with the Hellenistic period when Greece occupied parts of Central Asia and India. The Greek wind god Boreas became the god Oado uh, in Bac Bactrian Greco-Buddhist art. Then a wind deity in China, frescoes of the Tarim Basin. And finally, the Japanese wind god Fujin. The wind god kept its symbol, the wind bag, and its disheveled appearance throughout its evolution. Now, I want to go up, because before this, we have all the depictions before we get to Fujin. And from left to right, it's left the Greek wind god, which is Boreas. And then uh, the middle one is the wind god from Kazil to Rimbasin. And then the right is the Japanese wind god, Fujin. So now I got to thinking, like, okay, I was already aware of Fujin when I made that tweet. But then I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I did not realize that the depictions across time started out with Boreas. And of course, you know I'm going to go straight into Yuno's new spear die form called the Spirit of Boreas. Now, while Luck and Yuno are obviously not brothers or even friends for that part, they don't, they've never really interacted in this series, as far as I can tell uh, or remember. Yeah, I don't think they've ever really interacted, uh, not in depth. So to call them friends or brothers is a stretch. But now this is going back into my long running theory on how Asta and Yuno are connected, more so Liebe and Yuno are connected. So we all know, being fans of this channel, that I it's no secret that I believe that Li Bei's not only Lick's son, but that Li Bei's original magic should have been Yuno's magic, which is wind magic. But credit to Quan, I think it's more specific that it's Aether magic. So instead of acquiring Aether, which is pretty much the breath of the gods, which is which is the wind that is everywhere, it is it's divine wind and it controls pretty much anything because it's everywhere. Air is everywhere. Um, Instead of that, he's controlling the the lack thereof, if that makes sense. Uh, so instead of bringing it all together, he breaks it apart now because his soul has been uh, perverted. Uh, and, and that's due to, of course, me thinking it's, you guys don't have to agree with this part, but it's my thought that Lix either purposely or accidentally sacrificed Leah Bay doing that whole thing during the uh, elf massacre so given that um that connection we go back to asta and remember when i first talked about it, it's called asta morning star um where i make the parallel between Asta and you know how you know spirit of zephyr was the the greek god of the con i now hold up i gotta get this right now i believe it's the greek god of the west and then boreas is the wind god of the north the, the icy ones whereas Asta's form with this morning star is attributed to Lucifer, of course, and Jesus. But Lucifer, I would say in this case, since it is obviously a devil form. Uh, and Venus is attributed to the East. And Lucifer in Luciferianism is attributed to uh, the god of the winds of the East. Okay, so where you know has covered West and North... Asta is now covering east, and if we count his half form, that could possibly be the south. So they are two sides to one whole thing. So Asta and Luck have a relationship. And I think this is this is Tabata's just way of saying like this is the relationship. This is this is not exactly Fujin. This is Fujin, like half of Fujin. Let's say that. This is half of Fujin. And if we look at Fujin, remember, he's got a bag of winds. He's not, it's not really coming from him, if you get what I'm saying. This is just like a tool that he uses. Um, uh, that's a whole part of his stick. So take this picture and say, and I, I don't want to say that you know is a tool, because you know is way more than that. But uh, just go with me on the visualization part, at least. So if we take this, the devil, the oni, in this would be Asta and Liebe. 
Uh, whereas the bag of winds would come from you know that is you know the actual power of the winds comes from you know so again this is these are two separate pieces the bag can exist on its own and the oni can exist on his own together they create fujin the wind god um now how Am I saying you know and us are going to like fuse together at some point? Absolutely not. I don't think that's going to happen. But I do think the key element is there is that they are two halves of a whole. And now with luck in the mix, I think it further solidifies this relationship that's supposed to be happening between Raijin and Fujin here. Now to go even more into depth about this this form that we see luck in. He acquires this because he becomes acquainted with the souls. And this is what the Dryad says in the latest chapter, is that uh, they must become acquainted with the origin of souls to then acquire ultimate magic. Artificial, since they, they aren't elves and they don't have the capacity to hold that type of mana, but they do know mana method and all that. So they can use ultimate magic via that. Um, so what I get from this is that we got to go back now and we got to look at Asta's form and this has to come from Liebe, right? So remember Liebe is stuck in the Grimoire and he's just like fuming, furious because Lucifero just took away the only thing Liebe ever had and loved and now he's all alone. And then he develops anti-magic because he's cursing the devil so much, right? So... So now we have to dissect what becoming acquainted with the origin of souls means, right? Because in that time that you're alone, it's, it's you and four walls. You're going to do a lot. It's going to be a lot of introspective thought. You're going to be looking inside thinking like, who am I? What do I stand for? And if this is what the dryad means by becoming acquainted with the origin of souls and not just souls in general, but your soul, then Liebe could have been acquainted with his soul and ended up unlocking ultimate magic of his own, but it's ultimate anti-magic instead. Now, I know a lot of you are thinking like, wow, the reach was there and now it's just, it's all the way out there. Stay with me because we have to remember Liebe is not a low-ranking devil, okay? Just by the appearance, we can say that. He doesn't look like a beast like the lower levels. We already saw the mid-tier levels. And he looks a step above Zagrid even, who is considered a high-level devil. But instead, he does look a bit more like Lilith and Nama, who are a little bit more human-looking. So we know that Liebe is not just some random devil. There is a rhyme and reason for Liebe. Okay? So... Again, I do think this further solidifies the fact that he is the son of Licht. He's the forsaken son of Licht. I hope this kind of makes sense. I, I, I want to allow a little time for you guys to digest what I'm saying. Because if this is the case, then he would be a chosen elf who would then have access to ultimate magic because their father was the throne of Keter, who is the highest, who would be for sure chosen. So for Liebe to do this and make a form and then have these orbs around them and then find out that luck has the same thing happening, this this kind of just makes me think that this this is what's going on. Because remember, luck is also the only one in that group that was possessed by another elf. Okay? And and this is slightly off the whole Raijin Fujin thing, but just to further solidify the thought, remember that every elf looked exactly like their counterpart. So why would it be that Asta and Liebe look alike? We can't just throw that away. These are hints that Tabata is giving us throughout the series. And we can't just throw them away and say, like, no, that's impossible. There's No, we have a lot of evidence that points to uh, this being the case. Now, to go back into the subject, I just think that, that this is pretty much ultimate anti-magic is what we're seeing. Um, and this, this devil union being 50-50... 
helped Leah Bay further cultivate that. Um, but but I mean, the, there, there's a lot to go into. There's a lot that we still need to find out. Is this 100% right? No, absolutely not. Probably not. Most likely not. Is some of this valid? Is it? Is it? Could it be right? Absolutely. I mean, I'm not pulling much out of my ass, I don't think. But I mean, that's up to you guys. You're going to let me know in the comments section below or on Twitter what you think. But I do think with this lore of Raijin and Fujin, this makes sense given that Asta has the mark of the morning star, which is attributed to Venus in the east, where Lucifer is known as the god of the east wind. And then you have, you know, Boreas, god of the north winds, and Zephyr, god of the west wind. I mean, they're covering all of the four cardinal directions at this point. Um, now, a little further into a read about Fujin, before I go, uh, was something interesting. There were three separate stories, but one that stuck out to me the most was that uh, Fujin is... is uh, becomes uh, tyrannical, in a sense. And they... I forgot the, the being's name. Uh, it started with an S. But they had asked him to to go and capture Fujin because he was getting out of hand. Um, and I wonder if Tabata is going to use that because we, of course, have this rivalry between Austin, you know, where it's very friendly. But if one goes rogue, the other one is going to have to take care of that matter. Because at this point, we have a being, you know, who can pretty much control whatever mana is in his area when it's crunch time but it's mostly when devils are around if we look back at all the evidence that's exactly when it happens but if we keep going then we have asta and liebe who are the exact opposite who uh break down the mana uh that's out in the world so these are two very opposing forces some would even say twin gods, which are also called the Thalmael. So uh, all of this, all of this will further be solidified the more gates that we open. Um, and just a little tidbit before I go, um, when it gets to the fifth seal, where Ostaroth is supposed to be, I think it should be very interesting. Because even if Ostaroth isn't Asta's father, Ostaroth is known for... Um, not only kind of being good, but also uh, being happy to talk about the origins of everything because he does know how everything works and how everything came to be. So we'll get a lot of our answers at the fifth seal, if not a little bit earlier. So that's kind of my thoughts. Tell me what you think in the comment section below or on Twitter. Um, thank you guys for tuning in. This has been Jack Oats to go. You either know. Or Yami season is over now. <laughs> but man, the way Xenon pulled up on Yami today was so crazy. Like, they had no idea he was there. By the time they turned around, he was already packed up. That's so wild. I love how they illustrated everything in today's episode. That was wild. But but yeah, anyway, it's Jack Oats to go. You either know or you don't.